Hello again, I am Blunty. It's been a minute since I've done a movie review. Used to do that quite frequently here on this channel, but then it just got too much of a pain in the ass, basically. Uh, as one relevant example will demonstrate, uh, 2009, 2008-ish, something like that. I got an invitation from Paramount themselves to go along to the Transformers movie, the Michael Bay one. Also did a bunch of interviews and stuff with the, with the people in it and spoke to Michael Bay himself about that on the red carpet and everything. You know, I was, I was in the mix there. But then Paramount decided to copyright strike the review video that I made about that movie, even though they provided me the footage to use in that in the first place. And it was back in the dark ages of YouTube when movie studios weren't really quite with it on, on how it works and how it's not in their best interest to copyright strike people making reviews about their stuff, especially when you're working directly with those people and you provided them with the footage in the first place. It was very frustrating. However, I am particularly inspired to do, well, I hesitate to call this a review because it's all just off the cuff. I've literally just come back from seeing Transformers 1. I've literally walked in the door. I'm so excited. I've set up the camera. I got, I got, to, I got to talk about this. If you've ever spotted the 20th anniversary uh, Optimus Prime sitting back there, in prior to place on my shelf you'll know that i'm a transformers fan i've made videos about transformers in various aspects uh I even reviewed a transformers toy once uh the the, the hasbro people sent me this and say hey you want to you want to review a toy and i made a little review talking about hound i made a little stop motion animation with him transforming and everything and hound hound is cool i don't think i saw hound in transformers one there are a lot of familiar ish faces uh, in the background of, of many shots of Transformers 1. I don't think I saw Hound. Saw Jazz. But the thing that inspired me to make this video is, as I was coming home on the bus, I'm texting my mate, uh, who's like me, he's a Gen X, grew up with Transformers in the first place, you know, 1984, uh, you know, the original series, 1986, the original Transformers movie, which we both still love. We both agree that, uh, uh, you know, the Bumblebee movie, the Michael Bay adjacent Bumblebee movie, uh, is, is the second best or at least third best, uh, depending on which one of us you ask, uh, Transformers movie ever made. We slot this one, both of us slot Transformers 1 amongst the top three. I think it's the second best. He think it's maybe the third best. I think he likes Bumblebee a bit more. But I'm texting with him on, on the way home and uh, I'm scrolling through my newsfeed and I see this article pop up. The, the, it's, 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 claim, it's, it's a baity headline, all right? It, it is a baity, baity headline. It's claiming that the new Transformers movie is flopping. It's a flop. And that Beetlejuice is beating it. Um, I'm not sure how much truth there is to that. Uh, apparently it's being reviewed quite well. And well should it. Because it's awesome. It's properly awesome. I loved it. Self-censuring a little bit here. Because well, Transformers is a child-friendly uh, kind of... Thing, isn't it now if i'm smart enough i'll put this in the title of the video as well but this will be spoiler free uh so i'm going to tell you uh in my own words you're just off the cuff how excited i am uh to get you guys to go see it so maybe it won't be a flop and so we can get way way more you know sequels and spin-offs and stuff of this particular uh incarnation of transformers because i loved pretty much everything about it and because it is an origin story, basically, that's not really a spoiler, that's the concept for the film. Um, so we're seeing, you know, Optimus Prime and Megatron and some other bots before they became Optimus Prime and Megatron and the other bots, you know. The bot we know is Optimus Prime is still going by Orion Pax, his original name, before he became leader of what would become the Autobots. Same thing with Megatron. So this is essentially a, a reboot of the franchise in, in most ways. It opens the door to spin-off you know, stories from that point on for an entirely new timeline of Transformers stuff and adventures and all kinds of things. Things I will say first, I am of the opinion, as many, you know, cinephiles uh, are, I, I wish they had not gone with the big name voice actors. I want Korean voice actors to do voice acting in these kind of movies. I mean, I like Chris Hemsworth, fine. He's a, he's a great actor, fellow Aussie, yay. Um, but... He's not doing his Aussie accent. He's not even trying to do his weird Thor accent in this one. He's trying to do sort of an American accent because that's how Prime speaks. Um, and it sort of falls all over the place sometimes. Uh, you hear sort of twangy Aussie come through here and there. Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Uh, I love Scarlett Johansson in many things. Um, even in voice acting, like in the movie Sing. I loved her in that. Fantastic. I don't know if she was the right choice here. I'm not going to tell you who they cast him as because maybe it's a spoiler, maybe not. But Steve Buscemi's in this film. Guess in the down below in the chat. Think think of Steve Buscemi's voice and think, who would they cast him as? Hmm. But yeah, 
The performances are damn good. The characterizations of all the bots we know and love feel genuine. Some of the dialogue is a bit sort of heavy-handed and ham-fisted in many ways, but that is also pretty Transformers stuff. It has always been a little bit pantomime, a little bit over the top, a little bit operatic in many ways. Um, and, and sort of that, they fold that sort of energy into this, but it's not too much. Um, the bot we would come to know you know, years later as Bumblebee, uh, referred to in the film as B-123, um, is kind of still filling his role of, um, the unkind comparison would be Jar Jar Binks, you know, the energetic, youthful, excitable, um, you know, huge issues with impulse control kind of bot. And he's usually served that kind of role in many uh, uh, interpretations of Transformers. But in this, he's, he's definitely still the excitable, kid character and he's on the edge of being too annoying but it's just balanced well enough and you know he doesn't get far too annoying doesn't get too ridiculous and cartoonish which is a weird thing to say about an animated show and he does have a, a running gag that goes throughout the movie that they use exactly the right amount of times and it made me giggle a little more every time and then they left it alone it was perfect now, of course, like I said, we're talking about an origin film of, you know, what would become the Autobots and Decepticons and how that split happened. And, you know, the, the bots that would become Megatron and Optimus Prime started out as mates and how they grew apart ideologically and all that sort of stuff. And that change that happens, you know, in the, in the, in the final act of the movie, as you would expect it to have, again, not a spoiler, that's just the pattern you would expect this movie to have because it's telling that story. It's inevitable. You know the guy's going to be Megatron sooner or later. He's going to tell Prime to shove it. Um, when that happens, it's maybe a little too abrupt for me, but also how it happens and how the rage and betrayal and 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 fury and, and righteous need for revenge, how that builds in, you know, the bot who would become Megatron. It feels pretty genuine. It's, it's one of my favorite ramps of 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 his turn um similar kind of thing with prime the way he you know starts out as just this this curious you know bot wanting more hoping for more full of optimism uh for for himself and for his fellow bots that there is a better day to come um that all grows really nicely too and for a film that I expected to be sort of heavily on the kiddie side, because it does, when, when you look at the art style and you look at the way some of the action scenes are presented in the trailers, for example, uh, and some of the dialogue we've heard so far, you think, oh, it's going to be a pretty, you know, aged down thing to, to get a new generation of fans on board. We're going to sell this to the seven and eight year old kids, just like you know, back in the day, the Transformers cartoon was made to sell me when I was seven, eight, the, the toys. However... Well, it does steer away from doing that thing a lot of, you know, kids uh, movies and TV shows doesn't, you know, sneaking in that, that naughty humor that only the adults forget. It, it steers pretty clear of that. It is rather more brutal than I was expecting. Like, they don't really shy away from the violence. I think they can probably get away with it a bit more because they are robots and not fleshy things with blood and guts that pour out, just sparks and wires. And unlike the Bay movies, they're not full of goo this time, which I appreciate. One of my least favorite things about <laughs> Michael Bay's interpretation is there's, there's too much goo in the Transformers. But, and I will, I, I'm, I'm going to use one spoiler here, one spoiler. So for those of you who don't want to hear the spoiler, mute the video while I've got my hand up like this. I'm going to cover my mouth uh, so you can still sort of see when I put the hand away. But when the hand goes away, you are free to listen again if you don't want to hear the spoiler about one particular event of violence I was quite shocked by and excited by. Ready? Okay, here we go. When, when the hand goes back down, you can listen again. Megatron rips a motherfucker apart with his bare hands. Just tears him in half. And it's brutal. And it's amazing. And it's such a cool moment in the movie. Okay, we're done with the uh, excited about violence spoiler, but it really was just a perfectly done moment of ultra violence, if you like. It was also much more action packed than I thought it would be. Again, from the trailers, you get a sense it was a bit of a, um, a quest film where, you know, a few bots would go on a quest to find a MacGuffin, and, you know, it, which it is, but there was a lot more action, a lot more high octane action than I was expecting, too. And it was done really, really well i mean we are talking about industrial light and magic um and apparently a lot of it was animated here in sydney i saw in the credits 
uh, as a rolling by, it was, you know, animated in city. went, oh, but it is extremely well animated. I loved all of the models um, and, and, and the character designs and everything. Just there, there was nothing I didn't like about any of that. The story that was told and the pacing it was told at and the, the way the action scenes were sprinkled in there were all perfect. There's not a wasted frame in this entire movie. It's not as tight and as perfect a movie as, say, Spider-Verse, for example, which I think is one of the best movies ever made, animated or not. It's not quite reaching... Uh, as high for the title of art as Spider-Verse is. But it is a genuinely good movie. The writing, the pacing, the performance, the animation, the visuals, the sound design, it is all... Ooh. But I think what I liked most is their interpretation of the lore. There have been at least half a dozen, I think. There might be some Transformers experts uh, uh, watching this who, who can correct me, but at the very least, about half a dozen different origin stories of the Transformers, uh, usually involving, you know, Primus and the, the, the original 13 Primes and, you know, this and that. And there is that in the movie, but, you know, how we get from that point to where the movie is is a little bit different. I really like the way the lore is established. And again, I'm really trying not to do spoilers and say too much here. But the way it's strung together, it feels grounded, it feels genuine, it feels exciting. Um, and the way we get to see the discovery of some of the hidden lore of Cybertron that our hero bots don't know about, and as they come across it, they come across the truth of it all. It's genuinely exciting as an adventure movie, as a quest movie. And there is quite a few little sprinkles of references around. There's a reference to one of the original musical tracks from the 1986 movie, for example, that gave me a bit of a chuckle in the start of the film. And there are little bits and pieces sprinkled throughout the movie for, you know, the you know long-term fans, the quote-unquote true fans, if you like, uh, to go, hey, I remember that bit, or oh, I know who that bot is, even though they're not named or anything, just wandering through the background, you go, oh, there goes so-and-so. Um, they haven't heavy-handed any of that. They're not relying on the member berries kind of thing, where it's like just a string of references and, hey, remember this? Here, have some nostalgia. You like the movie because of nostalgia? No, the movie's not good because of the nostalgia bait. It's good because it's a good movie, which I really appreciated because we live in a day and age where IPs are getting recycled and recycled and recycled. There's fewer and fewer original new ideas being, being you know, given money to be turned into things. Instead, they're going, well... That worked 40 years ago. Let's do that again. But this time it does work again because the people who made it obviously give a crap about Transformers. They wanted it to be a good version of the Transformers world. They wanted it to be a good place to tell stories about the Transformers. And I really appreciated what they did with the Uber villain. It's not a very original concept, but it still took me by surprise when the reveal came. I went, Oh, I saw it coming a little bit off as they're leading up to it and go, oh, oh, oh. But you get a sense that something's off all the way through. But when the reveal comes, it feels, you know, like you're the, the hero bots witnessing this too. You go, oh my God. But yeah, I, I guess, you know, it's probably coming through in my enthusiasm and excitement and energy level. See, but I really, really like this movie and I really think you should go see it. If you are an original Transformers fan, if you jumped on board with, you know, Robots in Disguise or Prime or wherever you jumped on board with, I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy this. It is, it is, you know, really richly pure Transformery. They haven't taken too much license, but they also haven't just retrod ground for the sake of just doing uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, sell some toys, throw this out the door, who really cares kind of deal. They, the people made this care about it. And when you do go see it, yes, there is a post credits scene. Stay all the way through the credits, because at the very end, there's a very cool post credits scene. And the second to last uh, uh, shot of that post credits scene is one of the most awesome, desperately metal things I've ever seen. Like, it literally... <laughs> It's it's a pose of three particular bots, but they're all, it's shot from sort of a low angle and there's, there's you know dramatic lighting, and it absolutely looks like the most badass metal band cover art you know album art that I've ever seen. I can't wait till this thing comes out in digital so I can just screenshot that and have it as my wallpaper just everywhere. It looks so badass. But yeah, I I really 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 do want this to be successful enough so Paramount goes well. People like this version. Let's make more things in and around this. Let's make a sequel. Let's let's make a, a TV series or, or a Netflix, you know, uh, uh, you know, 
six episode mini series and and let's let's make a video game about actually there is a new video game coming out isn't there and there is because the video game is, is a racing game but you also transform and do some other fighting i haven't looked very closely at it but there is some racing in the movie i wonder if they're actually linked or it's just a weird coincidence i don't know i have to look in the game now um but yes it's so fun to be excited about transformers again it is genuinely just cool. Transformers is cool again. I mean, it's never not been cool, but it's freshly cool again. Go see the movie. Thank you to the patrons. I am Blunty. Thank you as always. Um, yeah, if you've seen it, or once you do go see it, come back to this video. Let me know in the down below what you think, and, and if I'm overhyping it, or if you didn't like it. But thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.